the 12th and final bout of the evening. These are the big bangers, as they like to say, the super heavyweights. On the left of your screen, Alexi Lozen, a 21-year-old, 220-pounder. Two years on the national team, started boxing in 1984, and his opponent, the third of three U.S. national champions, boxing in this competition tonight. Lance Whitaker, 22 years old, at six foot eight inches tall, probably better known for his basketball skills, although Lance has nurtured and cultivated quite an amateur boxing career and uh, would love nothing more than to represent this country in Atlanta in 1996. Well, Lance Whitaker has 24 bouts to his credit. The majority of those bouts took place in the Golden Gloves, the Olympic uh, Festival, and the National Championships. So that's really not a lot of bouts. But at 6'8", weighing normally around 237, he's going to fill it up here. Tony Fellapilli, the, the third man in the ring. I'm very glad to see him in there. There's no place to hide, though. It's a full house. You know, one thing you might look for early on Whitaker, he admitted to us today that he simply needs to bend his knees more. He stands too tall. He has no fear of being hurt in the ring. He just says he's never been hurt as a boxer. I don't think anybody can get to an area that would hurt him. His only problem is boxers who beat him get inside him and work the body pretty well. But let's see if Whitaker flexes his knees a little bit more instead of standing upright. Well, there's a very interesting twist in this bout right here, and that is these two boxers met a year ago when Whitaker was just a little younger in experience, and the victor at that time was Lozen. Let's see if Whitaker can capitalize on that experience and learn from his mistakes now and come back and win this rubber match. I would one minute gone, excuse me, Van, in round number one, scheduled for three. The final bout of the competition here on Prime USA against the Russians. The 25th consecutive year without interruption. And when you think about it, in 1980, the U.S. Olympic boxing team boycotted the Olympic Games in Moscow. President Carter insisted on the boycott. But this competition persisted throughout all of the years of the boycott, the Cold War, and everything else which is a great tribute, a tribute rather, to Colonel Donald Hall. As Colonel Don Hall said, this sport has transcended politics. These two boxers and these two countries have sent their representatives to come together on common ground, that common ground being sport. And quite honestly, Sam, we have learned from each other down the road. Boy, Whitaker's really a flat-footed boxer. He, he really is. But Very stiff-legged. Look how stiff his legs are. Well, look at the muscles on those legs, those calf muscles. They're like telephone poles. It's incredible. <laughs> Better limber up a little bit here, huh? I mean, he has some cat muzzles that are just bulging. But it's the knees that we're talking about. Yep. And those calf muscles, they don't really carry it as much as the quadriceps do and, and, and that muscle group above the knees. So if he can keep it bent, he'll be in good shape. Watch Lozen, classic style. Watch him get his right hand out there. There's your classic Russian style. Then he comes right back to the with body the left, with that left hand. With the left hand, he does. You got it. You got it. But now, Sam, why is it when we were walking earlier and we heard a woman say, I'm really in it. All I really want to see is... Oh, what a shot. What a shot. At the bell. I, was that not the bell? I just didn't know. 12 seconds left. I thought I heard the bell ring. I've had ring my bell, I'll tell you. Momentum has shifted. Lozen took it. Whitaker just drove him across the ring into the ropes, and there is the bell, ending one. And it seemed like a lot of action was stored up to the end. Reached back and delivered that right hand that sent Lozen back and bouncing off of the ropes. Strong right hand by Lance Whitaker. But it needs to be pointed out, Bam, that is worth nothing more than just the equivalent of a jab. It is one scoring punch in the amateur rule. Lozen just a bit late coming out of the uh, corner after the bell to start round number two, cleaning up his corner a little bit. Tony Filippelli holding him in his corner now. Brings them together to start round two. The procedure for that is 10 seconds before the end of the round. The blow whistle and the referees will yell seconds out. At that point, they have to get out of the ring. A little slow on that time. Maybe to give their boxer a few extra seconds to recover. Believe it or not, Lance Whitaker has a twin uh, back home. Although he's three inches shorter, he's only 6'5". He got short change, the twin did. Whitaker got the extra three inches. He is a huge specimen, I'll tell you that. 
Well, let's see if he can unload another powerful punch on Alexei Lozen in this second round. Why is it, Sam? I started to say, I heard a young woman say as we were walking earlier, all I really want to see are the heavyweights. Why is that? Why do people gravitate to the heavyweights? Well, there's a lot of glamour attached to that weight classification, and, uh, oh, oh, I think he just stepped no, on his foot. He stepped on his foot, didn't he? Stepped on his foot. Yeah. Lotion tried to get out of the way, and so he fell. Philippilli's calling it a slip. Cleans off his gloves because they touched the canvas in their back end. But watch what Whitaker does with his left foot. Look how far extended the left leg is. Incredible. And he stepped on his foot uh, there, and, and uh, he's almost uh, done it a couple of other times. But he stepped into it. Look at that. Incredible. Now, he's going to get cautioned for that. The referee is going to caution you. It's nice to be able